Uh, hi, everyone. As you mentioned, my name is Anna Kawakami. I'm a second year PhD student in the Human Computer Interaction Institute at Carnegie Mellon. I'm here to present our paper, A Validity Perspective on Evaluating the Justified Use of Data Driven Decision Making Algorithms. This is a paper led by Amanda Costin, who is a final year PhD student in the Machine Learning and Public Policy Department at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, she's on the job market, so I'm presenting on her behalf today. And this is a collaboration alongside Haiju, Ken Holstein, and Hoda Hidari. Organizations are rapidly adopting data-driven decision-making algorithms, or DDAs, to augment human decisions in complex, high-stakes settings. For example, you may have seen recent news on the use of algorithms to assist frontline decision makers in public health, criminal justice, or child welfare. The use of DDA tools, as currently designed, has been met with significant contention. These tools have been introduced to these contexts with the hopes of helping to overcome limitations in human decision making. But at the same time, AI-based judgments are themselves imperfect and biased, even if in different ways from humans. And in the past years, we've seen this duality increasingly, increasingly recognized in popular discourse. In recent years, a growing set of organizations deploying data-driven decision-making algorithms in high-stakes settings have stepped back from using them after facing public or internal backlash around the use of the tool. For example, child welfare is one domain in which data-driven decision-making algorithms are rapidly spreading. Look at this map here from the ACLU in 2021. The states here that are colored green have social work agencies that are currently using DDA tools. Just as common are the yellow states, the ones that have tried but decided not to use the tool. And this list is rapidly growing every year. Just a few months ago, Oregon decided to drop their tool. And just last week, we learned that Allegheny County's tool is being scrutinized by the Justice Department after facing several formal community complaints. This reflects the start of a common trend observed amongst data-driven decision-making algorithms adopted in other high-stakes, complex decision-making domains. In the past decades, risk assessment tools in criminal justice, public health, and education have often been dropped after failing to produce the value it aimed to produce in practice. To address these challenges, much existing research and policymaking efforts focus on improving the accuracy, fairness, or interpretability of the model. But this work often starts from the assumption that the algorithm actually works and that its design is basically sound apart from such concerns. Yet, Actual decision-making algorithms used in the public sector and other organizations today often suffer from fundamental challenges surrounding the validity of the underlying model. These limitations are often invisible in existing common practice evaluations of data-driven decision-making algorithms to use today, creating situations in which models that claim high predictive accuracy and reduce disparities through pre-deployment evaluations eventually encounter various unanticipated failures after it is used in practice. For example, in Allegheny County, a data-driven decision-making algorithm called the AFST, um, which is the one currently under legal investigation, was deployed to assist frontline workers in making screening decisions about whether to investigate a family for potential child maltreatment. The AFST, like many other algorithmic tools deployed in other domains, was trained to predict a future outcome that frontline workers don't actually consider in their own decision-making. Frontline workers make their decisions based on immediate safety concerns for the child. On the other hand, the AFST model predicts the risk of out-of-home placement in two years. Prior research found that workers perceive the model target to be incompatible with their actual decision-making objectives, professional training, and legal constraints. As a result, they fundamentally disagreed with, were concerned about, or didn't know how to practically incorporate the model's risk scores into their own decision-making processes. The agency had shared multiple evaluation reports before deployment, each showing high levels of accuracy. What these evaluations didn't adequately assess were the compatibility of the tool with frontline workers' decision-making goals and processes. In other words, in the eyes of the frontline workers who were asked to use the tool every day, the model suffered from poor construct validity, amongst other concerns. In many of these real-world cases, 
Problems of observed post-deployment originate from decisions made as early as the initial problem formulation stages or in the process of operationalizing latent constructs of interest using more readily available observable indicators. Without a better understanding of how to address these challenges directly and early in the design process, we risk continuing a broader trend of widespread DDA adoption, contention, and failure. In this paper, we center validity considerations to provide an initial step towards understanding how to better evaluate data-driven decision-making algorithms. At a high level, validity aims to establish that the system does what it purports to do. Drawing on definitions from social science theory, we consider a measure, test, or model to be valid if it closely reflects or assesses the specific concept or construct that a designer intends to measure. In translating this into the context of data-driven decision-making algorithms and putting it in the highest level language possible, an algorithm may be valid if it predicts what we think it does. So this might sound simple, but as illustrated in earlier examples, threats to validity have in the past often been overlooked very early on in the design stages of the model. So in this talk, I'll be focusing on describing portions of the paper that are focused on validity. Um, but in the full paper, you can find also a taxonomy and literature review of broader criteria for evaluating the justified use of decision-making algorithms, including things related to reliability and value alignment. So we discussed three common threats to validity, translating key concepts from validity theory and the social sciences to the context of data-driven decision-making algorithms. In practice, there's often considerable misalignment between what humans intend for the algorithm to predict and what the algorithm actually predicts. In most social high-stakes decision-making settings today, the desired prediction target, like child maltreatment or criminal activity, is not easily observed in collectible data. Therefore, proxy outcomes, like child placement or referral or criminal rearrest, are used instead. These outcomes have historically been documented been documented and readily available administrative data sets. However, in settings like child welfare, criminal justice, or healthcare, the use of proxies is particularly problematic because they risk exacerbating existing historical biases in the system. For instance, in healthcare, an extensive body of prior literature has documented how clinicians tasked with allocating resources to high-risk patients are concerned about their immediate medical needs. However, given, given limitations and what could be captured in quantitative data, models for decision-making often instead use a proxy of patients' healthcare costs over the course of months or even years. Healthcare costs are a poor indicator of whether a person needs medical help because certain demographic groups are less likely to seek or less able to seek medical attention. Prior literature has documented how the use of this proxy leads to systematically underestimating the severity of, of poor healthcare outcomes for Black patients. And as illustrated in the motivating example at the start of this talk, severe target misalignment can also cause challenges beyond exacerbating existing systemic biases, like causing complications and confusion when used by frontline workers to make decisions in practice. Severe target misalignments indeed jeopardize the construct validity of the model or how well the measure captures what's, what it's intended to measure. To make meaningful predictions, we must also have data on relevant predictive factors. If there's no plausible causal path between the predictive target and a feature, such that any correlation is entirely spurious, the inclusion of the feature immediately jeopardizes internal and external validity, where internal validity is how well the claims of a study hold true for a given artificial study setting, so in this case, a decision task, and external validity is how well the claims hold true for real-world context compared to the sample training data context. For example, one particularly pressing example is the use of human facial, fa facial features to purportedly predict criminality. In this case, an extensive body of literature has disproved the pseudoscience that a person's facial features could predict criminality. And even if we can justify our choice of predictive attributes and target variables, we can still have validity issues if the data set does not represent the target population due to select selection biases or other distribution shifts. 
If the model performance on the data set doesn't accurately reflect the model performance on the target population, this could lead to misleading evaluation measures, for example, around the fairness properties of the model. For example, in criminal justice, we observe rearrest outcomes for defendants who are released. And in child welfare screening, we only observe removal from home for reports that are screened in for investigation. Similar to how the use of imperfect proxy outcomes based on availability of data might lead to replicating or exacerbating existing systemic biases, population misalignments might have similar effects. Population misalignment might also arise in distribution shifts due to domain transfer. Today, in many city-level public sector agencies, there might not be enough resources and time to develop in-house data-driven decision-making algorithms using data collected locally. Therefore, agencies might procure algorithms from private companies. This introduces additional barriers to ensuring that the model used to train the, the data used to train the model reflects the target population. So in practice, it's generally not possible to ensure perfect target attribute and population alignment. For instance, nearly all prediction settings suffer from population misalignment due to temporal differences. The training data is observed in the past, whereas the predicted prediction task is in the future. A central question concerns the degree of this misalignment. So now, as a reminder, our broader goal in this paper is to center validity considerations to provide an initial step towards understanding how to better evaluate decision-making, data-driven decision-making algorithms. So as an initial step towards supporting agencies and deliberating and evaluating the appropriateness of different degrees of validity, we propose a deliberation process to support future stakeholders in identifying and reflecting on relevant considerations. To center the deliberations around validity, the first set of questions in the deliberation protocol requires the respondent to, re to describe the key constructs of interest, including the decision-making objectives, the, cr the criteria across which the decision is made, and other decision points surrounding this task. Shown in the blue box here is a hypothetical, hypothetical example response. Um, the example here and in the slides following is far from what we would consider an exemplary response. Instead, these are used for the purpose of better illustrating how validity-focused concepts might translate into real-world design considerations around data-driven decision-making algorithms. The second set of questions focuses on construct validity. At a high level, construct validity of an algorithm requires understanding the constructs involved, so the ideal target label and attributes influencing it, and the particular cause and effect relationships among them. In the paper, we discuss one possible way to prompt related responses by having respondents to this, respondents ask questions or answer questions uh, to first ideate what an oracle outcome might look like. That is, if they can ask an oracle to answer anything about the future, what would this be? Then the protocol might ask questions to compare and consider consequences of misalignments between what data is readily available versus ideally needed in order to predict that oracle outcome. An example response in the child welfare setting is again shown here. The third set of questions surround internal validity, including whether there is a defensible causal relationship between features and the target label. And I will be kind of going through these quickly, but during the QA, I'm happy to go back and pause out these slides if you're interested in looking at the examples and discussing them. And then the next set of questions focus on external validity, the generalizability of the model across persons, settings, and times. These questions might begin with prompting the respondent to describe the population for which the data is available, and then prompting the respondent about the target population in which the predictive algorithm would be used for, so that respondents can reflect on differences between the documented training and target populations and envision potential real-world implications for those differences. And finally, the protocol would ask respondents to discuss and document trade-offs between validity and competing considerations like standardization and efficiency. These questions encourage the respondent to articulate why they believe a predictive algorithm might support decision-making, including how they anticipate the predictive algorithm could complement existing tools and information available. To ground this reflection and specifics, the section could ask respondents to precisely identify the expected benefits of the algorithm, like improvements in efficiency or uncovering new patterns of risk. 
So ultimately, we really want to create a resource that's grounded in actual needs today, and once ready, can be adopted and used in practice. While we gave a simplified overview of validity in this talk, in practice, validity is more complex, multifaceted, value sensitive, and maybe socially contested. Some aspects of validity might require assessment by frontline workers, other domain experts, or community members, in addition to those typically consulted like developers, analysts, or social scientists. Therefore, in our follow-up ongoing work, we're conducting co-design sessions with relevant stakeholders like frontline workers, community members, agency leaders, and developers to collaboratively co-create a deliberation toolkit, a set of questions grounded in prior literature, including considerations from this talk, with uh, the broader goal of helping to structure future agencies' conversations around whether and when it is appropriate and justified to move forward with the design of a given algorithmic tool. This work involves learning from the experiences and perspectives of relevant stakeholders by forming new partnerships with three public sector agencies across the United States. The agencies on aggregate have experienced a range of decision-making situations around the creation or use of data-driven decision-making algorithms and may have unique insight into what infrastructural, legal, or other socio-technical constraints create barriers to their ability to design sound algorithmic tools in practice. Um, so these slides give a sneak peek into this ongoing work, including high-level questions produced from the co-design sessions, but this isn't the goal of today's talk, so I'll just skip through this part. Um, okay, so to recap, this talk uh, seeks to center validity considerations and deliberations around whether and how to build data-driven algorithms in high-stakes domains. Towards this end, we translated key concepts from validity theory to predictive algorithms. We described common challenges in problem formulation and data issues that jeopardize the validity of predictive algorithms and to support future stakeholders in identifying, disentangling, and reflecting on these validity-related challenges, we distilled these considerations into a high-level structure for a protocol aimed to promote and document reflections on the leg legitimacy of the predictive task. In future work, we are planning to finish co-designing the pro deliberation protocol in collaboration with relevant real-world stakeholders. Um, to ensure these considerations are grounded in real-world needs and constraints. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to this talk. My name is Anna. This uh, paper was led by Amanda Costin, uh, who, again, is on the job market, um, in case you're interested. Thanks for listening. <laughs>